Dit is onze fucking laatste klapper. En we zijn net zo goed als onze laatste wedstrijd. Wij zijn niet te verrassen. Verrassen en we gaan ze gewoon defeaten zoals het ook. Kijk om je heen. En we klappen en overheen. Wij zijn soms bij je niet. Wij zijn misschien niet de grootste. We zijn niet de oudste. Maar wij zijn wel het beste. En wij zijn 32 fucking games Jordan. En van Jordan bij En wij gaan vandaag. Oké, okay, let's go. Ah! So Operation Caribbean Urban Warrior takes place once a year and it consists of uh, Second Recon training in Aruba with the Dutch and also the Dutch Marines coming here to train with Second Recon. So this training between the 32nd Raiding Squadron and Second Recon is designed to increase our interoperability with foreign forces and also increase lethality for both units. So first we started training here on section level, just to be uh, refreshments, and then we straight went to troop level, uh, with troop level training, engaging in low and high uses of force. And now we're training on squadron level, so all the troops are working together and also embedded with second uh, recon. Well, I think prioritizing, especially in big operations, is where are our friendlies? Because especially in a village, when the fighting do kick off and you go on multiple angles, you always have to take care of the rest of your buddies, like where they are, where they're moving. So the communication, especially in mount up, is real important to know where everybody is at all the time. Fighting patrols are, we know where the enemy is and we're going to take them out. And the raid is basically a fast in and out operation to take the enemy out as quickly as possible and be on our way. Especially in the Caribbean, it's not always a, a job to go fighting first. Uh, we also have to do humanitarian aid and help people after disaster relief and stuff. And it's good to train it here to start a patrol, uh, like not low ready, but in low we talk to people, we feel the situation out, how they're living, do they have water, fuel, things to brighten up their life. And from there we can always put it more kinetical, so when an enemy engages us, we can engage them with the right amount of force that needs to be used to take that enemy out. Well, the immersion trainer for us is real special uh, because you can see all the tactics and all the mistakes or all the good things you did with all the cameras in it. So for us, it's real good training. The first part in the immersion training was to go in uh, with low force, so we have to talk to the people. And as soon as we got in, there were 20 people running to us, screaming for help in Spanish. And it kind of it didn't stop from there, but everybody was like, whoa, we're, we're back at it again. And from there, we had attacks from multiple sides. And yeah, from there, we enrolled our operation. And it's always good to see how your Marines react, how they take their cover, how they 
flag their positions and if they don't you can see it straight back on camera so yeah we had good training there good learning points and a good base for the future if you don't remember what you did wrong the cameras will tell you so that's the way you can always see back when somebody did something wrong or when his rifle was in the wrong way or he wasn't uh, paying enough attention. So the emergency trainer will really put you on your basic skills and drills and you can watch it back from there. So it's real good uh, training for us. Aruba is uh, the same as Curaçao and St. Martin, a part of the Dutch Kingdom of the Netherlands. The Kingdom of the Netherlands, we are providing safety and security on the islands. So we defend the islands in the Caribbean and also we cooperate with the local government and providing humanitarian aid to islands in that region. The relationship with the Dutch Marines and the United States Marines go back uh, into the 1940s. We started here in 1943 in the Second World War, bringing thousands of Marines to Camp Davis to train them in basic infantry, train the officers at Quantico. The United States provide them with uniforms, with weapons, with instructors, and we train all those Marines here before we ship them to the East Indies to participate in the final stage of the uh, Second World War. I'm not going to use one word, I'm going to use two words. Uh, I would say ready and relevant. Ready because when something happens on the islands, they are ready to assist the local authorities. And relevant because the work they do is very relevant. Think about a uh, humanitarian disaster that we had a couple of uh, years ago on one of the islands. Uh, then they did very relevant work. So I would say they are ready and they do relevant work. It was actually the first foreign Marine Corps who started here at Camp Davis back in 43. So for the United States Marine Corps they provide this training area and they invite foreign partners. The United States provide Dutch with uniforms, with weapons, with all the techniques. So we provide the young Marines and the United States Marine as a partner provide the Dutch with their equipment and with a lot of instruction cap capacity and get ready for uh, the, the fight in the East Indies. So they were shipped with thousands and thousands of Marines from here to the East Indies in the Pacific area to fight next to the United States Marine and other allies. As well, we sent out um, a unit back to participate in D-Day in 44 landing on the France coast. Before I comment on the relationship we have on the military side of the house, uh, I'd like to mention President Ronald Reagan, who once said, Today marks the 200th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between our countries. We're delighted that you honor us with your visit, Your Majesty. Visit that coincides with this historic occasion. Honor between our two peoples represent the longest unbroken to be honest, I believe that uh, we share the, the similar, a similar feeling on the military side of the house. The relation goes back to 1943 with the United States Marine Corps, when we established a Marine Regiment. And that re Marine Regiment was going to uh, take part in the final stage of World War II. But many NCOs, uh, officers and Marines were trained and equipped by members of the United States Marine Corps. So that is the start from a uh, long-lasting relation with, uh, with the United States Marine Corps. We got Black Devils from our enemy. The Germans in 40, uh, when they invade Europe and the Netherlands, they fought in uh, the beginning of May in Rotterdam. Uh, Rotterdam is the capital uh, or the city where the Marines are based. So those young Marines just a couple of weeks in the basic course, in boot camp, uh, woke up and the Germans invade the Netherlands and Rotterdam was the main city 
the harbor with a lot of bridges. So those young Marines gave heavy resistance against the Germans. It was all b around several bridges in the city of Rotterdam. Resistance was so heavy, uh, the Germans thought that there were companies, battalions, but there were still several Marines, young Marines, have black, dark blue coats and helmets and weapons with some ammunition. And with that small amount of the basic course they had, they gave so much resistance to the, all the Germans at the other side of the river. So when the Netherlands decided after the bombardments of the city to say, okay, we waved the white flag, those couple of Marines in black coats with a helmet and their weapons came out the areas where they defended the British and it was just a couple of them and that's the reason why the Germans say okay that was that was so horrible those are black devils so it goes back to the black coats and the resistance and what the Marines fought for We had an infill by foot through the through the woods and from there we had to raid a building so we did the raid from the forest into the buildings uh, from there we took a stronghold and from that stronghold we uh, assessed the situation in the rest of the village and from there we took out any enemy threats in the area we're both used to working in small teams of, you know, six, eight, ten guys. And it's interesting to see how another country foreign military operates uh, with similar sized teams, similar job sets, similar mission sets. And it's a great opportunity for us to bounce ideas off each other. Points of friction and mount revolve around a small team's ability to work well with each other. The team has the ability to take initiative and read each other's actions within the battlefield. They'll be very successful. Move! Move! base of our jobs, our job is almost the same, but it's always good to see how they do it and how we do it, just to learn from each other and see yeah, what problems we have, what problems they have, and how we overcome those problems to have a good operation. So it's always good to see them on both ways, so we learn from them, they learn from us, and we're all happy afterwards.